quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore here and I made another ruler of the month quilt and it is called Puzzle Chia. You'll need to go down to the link below to get that quilt. Remember that it's free until I launch the next ruler of the month pattern. And at that point it goes into my shop. So if this video is a little bit older and you're watching it, you can go buy the pattern in my shop. And if this video is brand new, then you can hop on over to my blog and uh, you'll get the link right away and you'll be able to download the quilt. And if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you know when I have a new video up and you can get those patterns while they're still free. Today we're using the Ultimate Flying Geese Tool by Creative Grids. This one's designed by Deb Heatherly and all Creative Grids tools have a QR code that'll take you straight to their site and it shows you how to use the tool, which is always handy to have with these Creative Grids rulers. You won't need that because I'm gonna show you how to use it. Right on this ruler, it has all the information you need for cutting. You can look at what finish size your flying geese are going to be. Today we're making the three and a half inch by seven inch finished size. And you're gonna cut one eight and three quarter inch square, and you're gonna cut four four and three quarters inch squares, and that's gonna end up making four flying geese units. Super easy. You can actually use two different methods to make your flying geese. One is the four at a time, and one is the one at a time method, which you're probably more used to. And you can use either method with this trim tool to make your flying geese. Super awesome, super simple. So I'm actually gonna start with the one at a time method because that's probably what you're used to. To do the one at a time method, you're going to just use a big ruler and you're going to cut this on the diagonal both ways so that you cut four large triangles. There we go, we have our four large triangles. Now we're gonna take our four smaller squares and we're gonna cut those on the diagonal once. And if you want, and you trust yourself, you can actually stack them all up and cut several all at once. There we go. Now this process is going to be fairly simple. You take one of your small triangles, you do the long edge of the small triangle with the small edge of the large triangle. That's big on small with small of big. There we go. And it's okay to have a little bit overlapping down at the bottom and you definitely want a nice good size point at the top. It should overlap more than a quarter inch on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. And now we're just gonna press this there we go. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. Taking the long edge of the small triangle and the short edge on the large triangle. Again, you wanna make sure you have a nice triangle sticking up over the top. There we go, that's been stitched. Now we're gonna press. And we have our flying goose block completely stitched. Now we're going to use the trim tool to trim it up. And we made size G. So there is a G right up here that we can see. And we can use our spot on dot right up here on the edge. And you don't want it going over the edge because we are gonna be trimming up here, but you want it right just inside the edge, but that's gonna allow me to see that top point really well. Nice. There we go. So now I've trimmed two sides and I need to trim the other two sides. So I'm gonna flip my block, but I'm also going to flip my ruler 
I can move my spot on dot to the G right here and line everything up. And there we go. I have a single block. Uh, to make a bunch of these, I would actually stitch all of my pieces first, and then I would go on a cutting spree and trim them all up at the same time. And that way you can make a whole stack of flying geese blocks, and this is the traditional method. What I would definitely do is make sure that your fabrics are really well starched, because when you're stitching these, you're stitching two bias edges. And a biased edge will tend to stretch, and you can see that stretch. And I've got these pretty well starched, so they're not stretching quite as much, but if you take a regular square of fabric, cut it on the diagonal that hasn't been starched, and you stretch that, it's just gonna wonk all over the place. So having your fabrics well starched will keep that from getting too crazy here on the seams. Now you can do four at a time flying geese, and that will actually keep it from going wonky. So we have our large square and our four small squares. And for this, we're gonna use a fabric marking pen and we can mark the back of these squares. I'm going to use two of these squares and set two aside. And I'm going to lay these two squares like this. And they will overlap here and that's totally fine. So I'm laying them so I've got one long line going all the way diagonally. And here's where you wanna grab a pin or two to pin each of the squares. And I'm just using one pin on each. But you don't want them to shift anywhere, you want that line to stay straight. This time I'm going to stitch a quarter inch on both sides. So obviously a quarter inch on one side, flip it and then stitch a quarter inch on the other side. And that's a quarter inch away from the center line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now we have it stitched a quarter inch away from that line on both sides. And I'm going to cut corner to corner on the diagonal. And now I'm going to press these up and it makes kind of like a fun heart shape. I'm going to do that with both sides. Okay, I have both of these pressed. I'm gonna take another one of my squares and the line is up and down this time. I'm going to place it, again, lining up my edges, so the edges of the bottom and the edges of the top are lined up, and this line is going straight up. I'm just gonna give that a pin, and this time I'm gonna stitch, again, quarter inch on either side, down one side, and then up the other. And then I can do the same with this one. We'll go ahead and get these stitched. There we go. We have our two heart pieces stitched and now we're going to cut down the line on both of these. And as you can see, each one made a right and a left on both of these. So now we're just going to press all of our triangles up. Now that we have them all pressed, we're going to do the same thing on our flying geese tool. It has a trim one at the top, so it lets you know which side we're trimming first. Go ahead and add that spot on dot. Help me see a little better. And I'll repeat that process with all of my flying geese, trimming them all up to the right size, and then they're perfect and ready to stitch in my quilt. 
So I made a whole bunch of flying geese for another product that I was doing. And one thing to note that if you're making flying geese like these and like these, where both triangles are the same, you can absolutely do the four at a time method all day long. If you're doing ones like this one or this one, where you've got a different fabric on each side and it's scrappy, which means it doesn't matter if this one's on this side or this one's on this side, then you can also do the four at a time method. But if you need your dark pink to always be on the right and your light pink to always be on the left, which is the case with all of the flying geese in the puzzle quilts, you will need to do the first method, which is the one at a time method. It really doesn't take that much longer to do the one at a time method. Um, the difference is those bias edges. And when you use a lot of starch, you'll be totally fine in stitching up those one at a time flying geese. But the trim tool helps you trim it so perfectly, perfectly accurate every time. It's fabulous. So there you go. That is the ultimate flying geese tool. This is designed by Creative Grids. If you don't own this one yet, I do have affiliate links down below that you can click. However, I always suggest you going to your local quilt shop and supporting them and asking them there if they have this flying geese trim tool for you to purchase. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and make sure you're subscribed to this channel because my subscribers get quick notifications every time I post a new video and you'll be the first to get these new patterns in your hands. Thanks so much for watching friends and I'll see you soon.